thought I'd take you guys around today and show you guys some fig varieties that just don't split. And then of course, talk about the reasons why they don't split because it's not just enough to show you, you know, some fig varieties that you guys can go after, but if you wanted to expand your knowledge and use that knowledge to then go after new varieties of figs, you could use the same principles that I use um, for those particular fruits. So right down here, actually, we have a, a fig ripening. It's called Moro de Caneva. And you can see on these figs, I mean, just across the board on the two trees I have right here in pots is that the stem is extremely long. Not only is the stem extremely long, but the fruits are very elongated and that they really have this classic oval shape, almost a teardrop shape to them. And what this enables the fig to do, because it has a long stem, because it has a long body, a long neck, and really not a, uh, a very fat bottom, it's very slender, it's able to shed water very easily. And this is really critical because when we think about splitting of figs or any fruit, when there is a depression in the fruit or there's an area of the fruit where water can collect and water can sit, that fruit is going to absorb a portion of that water. And the, the longer that water sits there overnight, let's say, and it's, it's wet overnight, uh, the longer that that water sits there because there is a depression and that the water is not shedding off of the fig. I see this a lot in figs that uh, have the tendency to be straight up in the air, like this one here, although it's really not ripening right now, but a fig like Italian 258, it splits so often because a lot of the figs, the bottom is pointing straight up in the air and the bottom is the most sensitive part to that splitting. So when you have an area like that as well, that not only is it flat like Italian 258 or a fig like this, I think this is probably a really good example right here. This one's called Princessa. I don't know how often it does split, but you can see just how flat that is. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't have that really oval shape. So if water were to hit this, it would hit here, slide off this way and then fall or hit here and slide off this way and fall which is okay, but the fact that this eye is now pointing up towards the sky, towards the rain, this is going to absorb a lot of water at this location and it's going to split. Whereas if you had, you know, this fig here where it just hangs straight down in the air, the bottom of the eye here is towards the ground. Almost no water will ever touch that point um, or very little water will touch that point. So there's a combination of things here is that the water is being absorbed into the fruits and because it's being absorbed, the fruits are growing, they're expanding very quickly. When you have a fast expansion of any fruit, they're going to have a higher tendency to split. Um, and it's the same thing with the water. If we water our trees too much, they uptake too, mu too much water at one time all that water is going to be sent into this fruit and it's going to expand more quickly and therefore it's going to split more often. So what we're really looking for, I think in a fruit, in a variety, I should say, for those of us who live in these very humid, rainy places, I mean, especially the tropics, we talk about places like Hawaii, South Florida, even just the South, like Louisiana, um, you know, places that get a lot of rain, we really want to be careful with choosing the right variety. And, you know, I've said before, actually, it's not just about the split resistance or the rain resistance. There's other things called hang time, which I've talked about. So there's a lot of factors that can go into this decision of choosing the right, the right fig variety for your particular climate. But across the board, I think a general recommendation for those of us in these more humid places, the Northeast for sure, um, you know, anywhere where you're not getting about 25 inches of rain annually, you're getting more than 25 inches of rain, you should be choosing varieties that are more elongated in shape. 
not only are they more elongated in shape, like you could see this fig here, this one's called Vagabond, and you can see it has that oval shape, right? It's got that teardrop celeste-like shape almost, although there's a, there is quite a difference. You can see here, here's actually a black celeste that's ripening, and it has that teardrop, typical teardrop shape that you'll see. This enables it, because of that long neck, that long slender body, it enables it to hang better, as I said, and not absorb more of that water. Now, even though this fig here, as an example, has the shape that we're looking for, it's not flat, right? It's not your CO Lotto. This one here, you could argue actually is probably pyriform, which is the teardrop shape. This one here is probably uh, your CO Lotto or, um, oh man, what's the other shape that I'm, I'm forgetting the exact name? But you also have figs as well that are just, they're just round. Like this one here, you can make an argument, or even this one here, this is just a round fruit. And because it's so round, you're then gonna absorb more water. You're then gonna have more splitting. The water is going to have a place to sit on the fruit. So it's really just that simple. And that I'm very biased now, very biased towards fig varieties and their shape. And that when I'm choosing a new variety, I almost completely, unless there is something very special about it, unless there's something that I think has a lot of potential in it, I am very wary, very negative and down towards varieties that tend to have the wrong shape. And I'm very bullish and positive on the figs that have the best shape. And I would argue, by the way, just for you know, out of all the fig varieties I've ever seen so far, this Moro de Caneva has the best shape. It just, it just does. I mean, this is like picture perfect. Not only does it have the oval shape that we're looking for to shed the water, but the stem really helps the fig hang in the right way to really help it shed water. At no point, as you can see on these fruits, I mean, as soon as this, although this one here is really pointing up towards the sky, very, very soon, as this thing starts to swell, it's going to very quickly hang downwards. I mean, there's going to be very few points in time. Whereas you can even notice with this Celeste, although it has, you know, a pretty long neck, it is swelling right now. It is changing color, but the fig is still pointing up a little bit towards the sky. And that's not what we want. We want this thing at this point already to be pointing downwards. And that's exactly what this Moro de Caneva is already doing. It's already pointing all the way down towards the ground. There's so such a small chance that that thing will split compared to so many other varieties. So for me, at least my money's on Moro de Caneva as being probably the most split resistant fig I have, which is why I value it so highly here. Because then when they don't split, they don't spoil, you're able to harvest them at a higher quality more consistently. And it's just a better tasting fig. You know, whereas you have other varieties like Black Madeira, they might be very tasty, but how many of those don't split and I actually get to enjoy at the level of flavor that they should have? Another fig here that I'm really, that's new and I'm impressed with is called uh, Medina. You can see again, here's the fruits in the shape of it right there. It also has more of these fruits up higher and it really is shaped almost like a cigar in a sense. And I believe uh, there is a type of Moro de Caneva or a, uh, a named variety of Moro de Caneva called Savarsky, which I believe translates to cigar, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember if that's true or not, but there is, a, there is at least a fig that exists called cigar that I've definitely read about at some point. Um, all right, so let me... Let me show you guys a few more varieties here that have really have that right shape that we're looking for. Um, Cause it really is, I think, you know, very special. It's not something you see all the time. It's not something people really look for. Um, and I've been very, you know, positive bullish on these particular varieties because they just have the right shape. I'm sure there's some here that I'm missing. But let's go over to some of the in-ground trees. And I do also want to mention that when you have a variety that 
is in the ground and in a container, um, and you compare them, the in-ground trees typically have a much better shape to them. And therefore, I believe it has a lot to do with, I think, the energy in the fruits, in the trees, that's then directed into the fruits, makes the fruits larger, the necks seem to be longer, the stems tend to be longer. Everything about it seems to be slightly more advantageous in terms of the shape, typically, when you plant them in the ground. So Neruccio de Elba is one of them here that, again, just has that really perfect shape. You can see some of them down here. It has a very long stem, and then the shape is basically a teardrop, which, again, is perfect for, for splitting. Uh, another one here I have that has the oval shape is called Verdone. You can see that there. This one seemed to do really well last year. I was quite impressed with it. continue. It's kind of tough to get in here. I have a number of different Celeste types just for this particular purpose. And that here is something called Texas Peach. I have a number of different black Celestes, a number of different typical Celestes that you would see. There's some of them that are blue, some of them that are a bit more brown on the exterior. Um, I also want to mention one other point here is that I have a fig here called uh, Rodino del Nord, and although typically this shape of the fig is round, the stem is typically long enough to really help it hang in the right way. So even though I've said that you need to have the right shape to the fig, the stem length and the neck length is really, really critical so that the fig can hang on the right angle. So even though a fig like Verdino del Nord and also a fig here like Campaneri, as you can see, Campaneri has a round shape as well. It's spherical, as they call it. The stem is usually long enough in the ground so that it hangs on the right angle, and it's not the worst in the world, you know? There's much worse figs that I've seen. Another one here, I actually just planted it because it had such a nice shape to it, is this fig here called Verdal Long. And I believe this is very, very similar to um, De La Senora Hibernenka, Coldedam Katat, Mora de Boo. Uh, but this one has a nice shape to it. Again, it's elongated, oval-like, more length to the figs. Um, so that's been always been impressive. I've been really impressed with De La Senora Hibernenka. And I figure, well, just because this one's so similar, why not plant it? And uh, it will really, I think, really impress me. Another one here is um, this fig. It's called uh, Rosa de Goni. And it has some pretty good elongated fruits to it. You can see there. Uh, let's see, moving on. So I planted this one with the knowledge that it would have the right shape. This one as well here, Mala Vermella, seems to have the right shape, although I don't have any figs on it. A lot of the cold adams have the right shape, and that's why they do so well here. You know, not just the Celeste types, they're also elongated. Those cold adams I have right here, which is, I think, cold adam noir. I also have a De La Roca behind it, which is very, very similar to the cold adams. Here's an interesting fig that has, like I said, it's performed so differently in the ground than it has in a pot that it's quite shocking. This one's called the Daloso, and the stem length, the neck length, everything about it just seems so ridiculously different than the years. I've had this fig for years in, the, in, the, in a pot, and it just is performing and looks so differently now in the ground. And it's got pretty good fruit set too, which is, which is also important. You know, it's not just enough here for that one little key characteristic. This one also seems to do well is Montalcina Rosa. We just planted this. And uh, over here is uh, the Golden Rainbow, which has a very long neck. It's very similar to Yellow Long Neck. Also, the stem is very long. So this fig, although it does have a very fat bottom to it, um, it could you know, have that water um, shedding that we desire because of that long neck 
because of that long stem, although the bottom is very fat. So I'm not gonna put a lot of stock into that one and say it doesn't split because the, the fatter the bottom is, the worse usually it gets. However, as I said, Fig Lake Campaneri, Fig Lake Verdino del Nord, they have a longer stem and therefore they're able to uh, shed that water and hang the right way. So the, the golden rainbow is hanging the right way, you know. This one over here is little ruby and here's like the complete opposite of what we want is that a lot of the fruits hang straight up in the air. You can see just like that. It's pointing upwards. And even with this one, the eye is open typically. So rain gets in there, bugs get in there, it spoils the interior. It's just not good. And um, highly, highly don't recommend, you know, this particular fig for that reason. I mean, that's probably the biggest reason I don't like it is that the shape is wrong. The figs are pointing up towards the sky. The eyes are to the sky and the eyes open. Uh, pretty much across the board, all the LSU figs are going to be great. You know, LSU Huye here, perfect. Uh, they all have Celeste bred in them, so they're just naturally very good at this. One that um, struggles is actually the Ron de Bordeaux. Um, however, because this tree is planted in the ground, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more energy, and the stems are usually a bit longer, and they seem to have a little bit longer of a neck. So even though the figs are very round, I mean, that's what Ron de Bordeaux means. It means round of Bordeaux. So the fact that the figs are round, they do typically tend to split. And a lot of growers have seen that over the years with that particular variety. This one here seems really impressive. It's called Medieval Yavor. And it has, a, again, that perfect shape we look for. Not a very long stem, but the neck is extremely long. So I'm interested to see what that one does this year. It's typically dropped for me many years in a row. Again, this is the uh, white Marseille right here, and the stem is very long, although the fruit is quite round. And uh, it's just something that's really critical, or something that's really important, I think, worth noting with these in-ground trees, is that they really do aid with splitting in such a great way. Here's another one here, it's called uh, Lampira. Very good shape to this fruit. Um, and what's nice about it is it's a lot like the Colded Alms. So this is perfect. I know it's gonna do well here in terms of the rain, in terms of that splitting, just simply because of the shape. You can make such a great pre preliminary judgment on these fruits based on that shape. Here's one that I, I took a little bit of a hunch, a little bit of a, uh, a leap of faith on. It's called Martinenca Blanca. The fruits are typically pyroform or even more Urciolato, as you can see here. So the shape's not perfect, but typically I've been seeing that the stem length is pretty long, the neck length is there, and then now that I planted it in the ground, it should really do well, even though this was a potted tree a month ago, it should do really well getting more energy to actually form these fruits and have the right angle to the fruits. You know, here's another Moro de Caneva. It's just, it's such a great fig. I have them all over the yard. Seriously is one of the best. Same thing with Neruccio de Elba. Probably some of the best figs I have, just bar none in terms of splitting. LSU Tiger is great. Again, it's just an LSU fig, LSU Champagne. They all have Celeste in their parentage. They all do this the right way. Um, and then another one that's really great over here is Long de Dute. The problem with Long de Dute is that it can split because the bottom is typically fat. So even though it has a long stem, a long neck, this will hang correctly, but the bottom is so fat, just like that golden rainbow. And it can form a very large fig. This year I have so many fruits, which is great to see on these trees. So hopefully the fruits won't get too big, the bottoms won't be too big. That's another critical thing is that if you don't have enough fruits, the fruits typically get larger. Because they get larger, um, you're just going to see uh, more of that expansion that I mentioned and you're going to of course have a problem more often with splitting. Um, I do also really like white Triana. I wish I had a fruit 
Let me see if I could find Waitriana. Now, Waitriana has a very fat bottom as well. So because it has this fat bottom to it, do I not have any fruits over here? Yeah, I don't have any fruits to show you guys on this tree. But typically, Waitriana has such a fat bottom to it that the shape is not right, but the stem length and the neck length is perfect to really enable it uh, so that it's okay. You know, it's not like it's the end of the world, as I mentioned with Long to Dute and uh, Golden Rainbow. And then, of course, I'll bring you guys over here. One of them that I've been really impressed with, looking forward to a lot of, is this fig here called uh, Vertolino. You can see just how long, elongated that is. And you know, some people might be thinking, well, Ross, this isn't the final shape of the fig. Even though it's quite young, it is going to expand quite a bit as it finally ripens in its last state, which is true. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But for the most part, though, if you can see that they already have the right shape that you're looking for, it's going to maintain most of that shape. Um, another one that I really like so far is Salato. Um, I really like Dalmaty, these different Dalmaty types. Here's actually one called Gayette. You can see just how oval shaped that is. And it's slender, <clears throat> right? doesn't have that fatter bottom. Another one that's impressive is salame, fico salame. It's an Italian fruit. So there's a number of good, you know, options out there that exist now. Um, I've been trying to find, get a handle on, get into my collection to then learn more about and see really them in action. But I've been taking really <clears throat> the advice of observing Smith or the advice of observing Celeste. I'm sorry and observing these teardrop figs. And why, why do they do so good compared to the other varieties? Why is Celeste such a rain-resistant variety? What is it about Celeste, guys? If you could tell me that, you know the answer to this problem. Another one, oh, I forgot about this, is Juale Noir. Look how long, elongated these figs are. Quite impressive. And then um, here's Smith as an example which typically doesn't have these elongated fruits. In fact, they're more Urciolato. Um, you can maybe make an argument for ovoid, ovoidal, but you can see as they ripen here, the fruits really hang down well on the branch and that the neck is not very um, sturdy right off the bat. So it allows the fruit to hang well and you can see that the fruits I have noticed in the last few days, we've had a lot of rain, has definitely helped shed those, shed that water off of that particular variety. Um, so it's not just about, you know, the ability to shed the water as well. It's about the ability to absorb the water. Is it going to absorb the water or is it going to just let it shed right off and the skin is going to be strong enough, tough enough or something about the skin is going to prevent that absorption more than other varieties. Some varieties just absorb water like crazy, you know? Um, so it depends. There's a lot to go in, into, uh, take into account here on this particular topic, but that's, I think, some fantastic advice. I hope you guys get something out of this. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching and uh, hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.